Yeah, it's my pleasure to give this talk uh, about my recent work on skirmions. So this is the title of my talk. I am uh, Rashid Svia from HQ in Oman. So it's about manipulation of chain of skirmions in multi-state devices. I will briefly, I would like first to acknowledge the, the work that has been done by my students, PhD students uh, at Saidi. Also, the nice discussion I had with uh, Nicola when I was visiting his lab uh, last summer. Also, my collaborator, Piramegam from uh, NTU uh, Singapore. So it was very nice collaboration. Uh, this is the outline of my talk. So after a brief description of the motivation of our work, I will uh, talk on the dynamics of first finger skirmion in uh, constricted devices. Later on, I will uh, discuss the case of interacting skirmions. Then uh, one of the major challenges for using skirmions in devices is stabilization of those uh, nanoparticles. And we will, uh, I will propose, uh, I will show you the scheme we proposed for stabilizing those skirmions before summarizing my talk. So uh, I was working for many years in magnetic memory. So the first uh, I mean, scheme of magnetic memory is basically to store the information in the domain, magnetic domain itself. And by reversing the magnetization, we can write the state zero and one. As the magnetic domain is shrinking down, we face different challenges like stability, like writing current, uh, writing field, then, it seems that people are shifting to storing the information in the magnetic domain rather than in the magnetic itself. Of course, we will face different challenges like uh, the writing current because any defect at the edge of the new wire will create a kind of pin insights, which becomes very difficult for domain world to move to the next state. If we increase the current, then the damage of the device by uh, generating heat then uh, come up now the scheme, the last scheme now people are working on in magnetic skirmions. It's kind of continuous transition from the magnetic domain to domain to skirmions. Uh, and all this is has some objectives. I don't know if I can use uh, toward high storage capacity, low power consumption, low energy, uh, high readout signal. I mean, you need to detect the state zero and one uh, accurately. And of course, high reliability. I mean, how many times we can write the information without the image of the device. Uh, for skirmions, they have uh, several advantages, okay? And I am listing down some of the major, uh, the major um, uh, advantages, like uh, they are very stable nanostructures. It can go down to a few nano nanometer size. Compared to domain wall based uh, devices, skirmions can be displaced just using um, two order magnitude lower than what is needed for magnetic domain wall. Also, one of the major advantages is they are very, I mean, I would say less sensitive to any defect on the on the wire or the device. I mean, you can still move them without being pinned. And I will show you later, I will show you some uh, videos about. The challenge for skirmions, one of the major challenges, is the how to write those very tiny and small uh, nano because kind of nanoparticles. Okay. Although there are some work, I am uh, putting down that there are some work people are using magnetic tunnel injunctions to read the skirmions, and uh, they could uh, successfully uh, distinguish between different states of skirmions in uh, the device. So in this work, I will focus only on the recent data, uh, recent, uh, recent result we did using micromagnetic simulation. Most of you are familiar with the Nando Lipsitz Gilbert equation. You can see here, this is the magnetization dynamics for every dipole within the device. You can see this first term here is the precession, then the damping, then the two terms of spin transfer torque. I am listing down here the parameters we choose for this study. And this is the material uh, parameters, the saturation magnetization, anisotropy, and the uh, Genovsky moria interaction. We fix all these parameters and we try to play with the uh, device geometry. 
process that I would like to show you here, this is the skermia at the age of nanowire. So you can see the snapshot down. It means this skermia at this state here, and it moves, and there is interaction with the age of the device, this age here, and there is Magnus force. You can see the skermion is, uh, is rotating, kind of helical uh, shape uh, that. And also you can see that when it is closer to the age, the size uh, shrinks to, uh, in this case, to nine nanometer from 30 nanometer initially. And as uh, we increase the current density, of course, higher current density, that means you, you, the skermion goes closer to the age and, and the, the size will shrink. It looks like Skelmio try to avoid to be annihilated, to be the, the, I mean destroyed. So it's kind of surviving Skelmio. Very interesting when we have been looking at the videos. So what I plot here in the right side graph is basically this distance from the right edge and the top edge. There are some studies that correlate this uh, Magnus force with the distance from the edge. In our study, we, we think that it is coming from the corner of the device. And that's what you can see here. I mean, this distance uh, x dxm, that means the minimum distance from the right edge and the, from the top edge, it is almost ex exponentially decaying with the current density. That means the scamion goes closer to the edge and at, at the same time, its size becomes smaller and smaller. And it is reported in this slide. So you can see here, this is the minimum radius of the scamion is almost linear with the distance from the edge. And we know that if we put higher current density, as I show you in the previous slide, we can make the, the scamio closer to the edge and consequently uh, its size will shrink. So it's almost linear dependence until the end when it is very far from the, from the corner, then the scamions will uh, find again its uh, initial size. Okay. And here, as you can see, uh, this is the force that we calculated numerically, the Magnus force versus the radius and the position of skermion with respect to the age. And it is also very nice fitting with exponential decay function. And here we assume the distance from the, uh, from the corner, not from the right age. And the force versus time is plotted in the insert here. And this is the maximum force when the scamio is closer to the age, then again, there's a relaxation, then to the next closer, as you can see from this uh, helical path uh, of the motion of the scamios. Now, in this case, I will try to discuss the case of two interacting scamions. So we, we put two scamions A and B closer with certain distance. And what you can see here, this is the path the red one is the path for a single scamion without interaction. Now, once we put two scamions A and B under interaction and driven by spin torque, once they will reach the age, what happened, uh, I will see the trailing and the one which is behind will be shifted by this delta X. This is due to the interaction with the scamion B. So it has much more flexibility to move further with this delta X, which is proportional to the interaction. However, this, the leading scamion, the blue one, because it, be, it is between this scamion A and the age, it has no space where to move. It will just shrink. And you can see the, the path is getting smaller and smaller. So we plotted here this interaction as a function of the, the current density. As we know, we put higher current, we, we push the scamion closer to the edge. It is linearly uh, decreasing with current density, which makes sense, actually, as we could see that you put um, a higher spin torque, you get the scamion closed. So this is indication of the interaction between the scamions. Yeah. So here we plot the separation between two scamions. Okay, this is like indication of the interaction. And we plot the radius of the skermion A and skermion. You can see whenever there is the minimum separation between skermions, then here the skermions A and B, both of them, they become smaller and smaller, they shrink. 
And here you can see the blue and uh, this uh, red and blue are the uh, scan muons and their interaction. And what is interesting in this slide, we try to plot the minimum separation between scamiums versus current density. And what we have, we have three zones. If I will just call this one zone one, uh, zone, zone zero is the white one, that you have just continuous uh, reduction of the size of scamium, both A and B, which is depending on the separation. However, for certain current density, what we could see that scamium uh, B, which is the leading one, disappear, I mean, annihilate. Okay. Furthermore, we can see that scamion, uh, the trailing one, the A, which is uh, B behind, will also disappear. So, and this is due to the interaction between scamions and the, the side, I mean, the, the age of uh, the, the divide, the Magnus force. I hope this video will work, so I will try. Not working. Just a little bit. Oh, I check it just. Oh, yeah, it, it is working. You can see this is at the low current density. Uh, there is this interaction, which means the skermion, which is leading, try to survive by, by reacting in very strange way by shrinking down. Now, for medium current density, you see at certain uh, time, a skermion with leading one will shrink too much, then it becomes unstable and disappear. And the last case, you can see both of them just cannot, can, you can see very interesting the, the size of skermions, which, uh, what's it related? They try to survive by getting smaller and smaller, but at certain below certain value, they will both of them will disappear. Now I will move to one uh, next part. This is just what I discussed earlier because of the time. I will not discuss longer this one. The, the main idea here is uh, whenever you have very small separation, that means interacting interacting force, then this is the time when the two skermions get smaller and smaller. Okay, now. The basic idea here is how to stabilize skermions. And from our experience in domain wall memory, we try to propose this, uh, we propose this uh, scheme here, you can see the conventional one, and you can see one which is stepped one. So we can adjust those parameters, lambda and D, is the offset between X and Y direction. And we try to see whether the skermion can be stabilized. Again, uh, we keep the all the parameters constant as can be seen here, the length 300 with it is, uh, with it here is 70, yes, 70 nanometers and thickness two nanometers. So this is a snapshot of uh, different of conventional and stepped devices. You can see with time that the skermions move continuously until the end and due to the interaction with the age, it will stabilize somewhere, but we don't know where it will stabilize. Now for the stepped device, there is some interaction with this corner here, the edge, and you can see the skermions get stabilized at very precise direction. Now, this is comparison of the position of the skermions in conventional, like one, and in stepped one. You can see continuous motion of the skermion until closer to the edge. Okay, the edge is 300 nanometers. However, you can see with time when it reached this edge here, this the stepped region. It will stabilize, and you can see the velocity also. Okay, like bounce back, with negative velocity, and stabilize almost at zero. So that shows the efficiency uh, efficiency of uh, using stepped devices for stabilizing skermions. Now this is also the dependence on the on the device, the geometry, like this D parameter D here. You have certain optimal condition that you can stabilize the skermions. And this one, you have the position versus time. You can see for, for this case, the skermion could escape, okay, and go to the edge of the, of the, the device, which means this barrier, you could see this barrier energy not enough to stabilize skermions. And under certain condition for high current density in this case, now the skermion just will, will uh, uh, be annihilated. 
in, in this video. So here you can see just touching a little bit because of the high driving force and it is enough to, to collapse. You can see you have to choose the best condition in terms of uh, device geometry dimensions and also the driving force. So both uh, are critical uh, parameters. Now we try to do extendability of this scheme to multi-state. And actually, when I was looking at uh, uh, neurons, you know, uh, they have synapses, they have neurons, and they have also, we call the exon. And exon is the path between the synapses and the, the neuron. And this one has very funny shape. And we try to imitate this kind of design. And you can see like kind of uh, teeth here, you know, or step. And uh, we try to see whether we can stabilize the schermio at different positions. So we can create kind of multi-state devices. In fact, uh, I didn't plot here the conditions. Uh, yeah, yeah, they are here. Actually, they are here. So we use different pulses, and we fine-tune the conditions in term. Actually, we fix the pulse width to uh, two nanosecond. It was fixed, which is another parameter that can be optimized. And we choose different amplitudes, and we were able to stabilize a single schemions in different states, all of them without missing any one of them. So that uh, tells us that uh, uh, this is one way to stabilize the schemions and to use this kind of uh, device for multi state memory. Okay, then uh, this is just to show you the, the motion of schemions. Uh, we have here two schemions. The, the leading one is number two, and the training one. And uh, it looks that this interaction is very interesting and uh, beneficial for the motion of the schemions. And the uh, schemion two could uh, stabilize in this uh, constriction region, the step region here too. However, once it is, it is uh, what we call uh, uh, there is schemions existing there. It is not free, then the second one will try to bounce back and stabilize in the previous state. It's kind of one schermion, one state. But the condition here is to control nicely the dimension of this step of the region. If it is too large, then you might accommodate two schermions per state. But if, if you do it nicely, you are able to stabilize a single schermion, uh, schermion per state. So that's uh, what I will show you. the. the how it works here, just I will take the case of two schermions and multi-state devices, and we will focus only on this first state. I hope the move, okay, okay, you can see it's moving. Now here, it is, oh, here, this is very interesting. That means this, uh, this trading schermions try to follow schermion ones to go to the next state, but because of the interaction, the repulsive interaction between the two, it is actually bounced back and it's like uh, it is forbidden to have uh, two schemions per state. I, I hope this one deserves to be seen again to show you how this one will change mind because of this interaction. And you can, uh, you can imagine you can have uh, more than one schemions and both of them will be stabilized, each one in one single state. We have this video, but uh, because of the time, I cannot uh, show this one. I don't know if this is another it was the same because I have also the other case when it goes. Oh no, this is a is the same movie. But I have another one which again the same uh, phenomena happened for the the other states. Okay, and I will I will end my talk with this uh, possibility. Actually, I could show you much more movies on this and more situation, but the summary is in this table. So we try to create nice schermions and we have this kind of multi-state devices. I, I, I would imagine this could be the neurons and this one synapses and this is the exon. And we can pump in mini schermions from one neuron to the other one. And, but uh, here uh, you could see that only one schermion per state is possible. And this is the condition we use, different current uh, density, optimized current density. And we could uh, count how many schemions survive, how many schemions move uh, to the different states, and uh, how many schemions are, are related. You can see here the number shrinks from nine to six. That means some of them be collapsed. 
However, what I think will be the next step is to create another uh, device beside and get some bridging between the two. That's how it works in biological neurons. And those cations, instead of being annihilated, they may move to the next one, which uh, something we have to work on in the future. Uh, Nicolas, still I have time, or that's the talk? Maybe I have to summarize the talk. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Well, people are a bit okay. hungry, but. Uh... Okay, but... <laughs> okay. So uh, maybe I just summarized my talk. I think I have 15 minutes. I think I don't Perfect. want to. Yes. If there's any question, I'd be happy to answer. Yes. Thank you, Rashid. You are with us. <laughs> Any questions? Hmm. I don't see any online. No. Uh, I, I don't have a, a question except uh, a comment. Uh, Rashid is going to visit, visit us again in June. So we are working on the implementation of that. <laughs> So probably okay. hopefully, hopefully it will work in real devices hopefully. yes very soon the question was what about if you simulate grains with grain boundaries in your material uh, grains uh, can you elaborate more on the question that mean what do you mean by grain that mean is the uh, but the, uh, wait, the, the, the problem is that the person left the, the Zoom okay, session, okay. so we only have the question okay. uh, written. But Actually, we but, are using uh, normal material, you know, uh, like uh, pyramidic material, and creating physically some kind of uh, constrictions that we yeah. can control by lithography. Yeah. So it's, it is made of uh, many uh, grains together. 